Music, Excel worksheet, scales, intervals, modes, and more. Constructing a scale in a circle as well as a circle of thirds. Part of the worksheet. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start at this presentation, possibly looking at it more from a music theory standpoint. We do recommend actually constructing the tables and worksheets either in Excel or possibly just with a pen and paper because we think it's a useful exercise to do. If you do have access to this workbook, there's multiple tabs down below. We've got the example tab, which will be the end result, what we're looking to construct and then use in our daily practice. And then we have the numbered tabs, which is where we're gonna construct part of the worksheet and the numbers aligned to the video presentations where we construct that part of the worksheet. Let's go on over to the example tab to get an idea of what we've done and where we will be going. So the most useful part of our worksheet from a day-to-day -day practice standpoint will typically be the actual fretboard, which we're listing out from low string or top string on top to bottom so that when we are behind the guitar playing it, we have the same angle or the same directions of left to right, top to bottom. I think that's easiest for us to then code the fretboard from our worksheet onto and under our fingers. We can then populate this information in terms of the scales and notes and chords we want to focus in on from our worksheet on the right. Now we constructed all of this stuff from our tables on the left, but the tables on the left are also useful just in and of themselves, giving us the numbers and the names of the notes in the musical alphabet, the list of modes from the standpoint of the major or Ionian mode, then the, lames, the names of the intervals abbreviated, as well as the full name, which could of course be useful if you don't understand the abbreviations yet, and then we have our musical formula for each of the modes. And then we have all of our modes in perspective or alignment or compared to our key mode, our perspective of the major scale. We have our intervals in half steps, the smallest unit of measure, our core unit of measure. And then we have that converted into the terminology of uh, intervals, which is as efficient a terminology as we can use but can be difficult if we don't understand what those intervals mean and what the actual distances are related to them so we want to you know get a grasp of that which we'll practice in our worksheet and all of that has been used to create this worksheet and then we created our fretboard what we want to do now is to create our scale in a circle format and this is another way to visualize the scale. Now, this is a little bit difficult to do in Excel because Excel isn't made for circles, <laughs> but, but we can do it. So it's kind of a lopsided circle here, but we're just gonna be putting our notes. It might be easier to see this one. We just put our no notes around in a circle so that we can view it uh, this way and we can, we can see how we construct our chords from the scale by just taking every other note in the circle and the fact that it's a circle allows us to just keep on going around and and uh, start on different points in the circle as opposed to visualizing the scale as though it's a, a repeating set of of notes so in other words we could see the scale this way so it's going to go the key of c c d e f g a and then it repeats again and i could repeat it down below similarly to what we do on a piano where we can imagine it going on forever like we do with numbers going out into infinity and then when we construct things like our chords we just take every other note but obviously we might not always want to list out a, a, a repeating set of notes it might be easier for us to visualize it in a circle because then I can easily keep on going around the circle, especially as we're creating, for example, chords to get a better understanding of what is happening with our chord creation. So then we have over here our circle of thirds, which is basically just taking every other note. So there's the C, we skip the D and go to the E, we skip the next one and go to the G. 
So that means that now we have the notes that actually are used to create our chords, skipping every other note in here already, right? So here's the E, G, B, the G, B, D. So now, so that's another way that could be useful to easily think about how the chords are created and which chords that we can use within a particular scale. And then of course, these will change with regards to the different modes on down below. All right, so that's what we're gonna construct this time. Let's go back to the 6050. I think the easiest way to do this might be to simply hide the fretboard for now. So I'm gonna go from the skinny all the way out to do, 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 here to, to BP, right click and hide all of that stuff, hide it. I wanna make another skinny, another skinny column over here. So I'm gonna select this skinny to make it the same width and then go to the home tab, clipboard, format painter, and put that on the BQ area. All right, so then we have to kind of eyeball where we're gonna start this thing. So I'm gonna kind of guess out here and start that I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna start out here on BU2, because I'm gonna have to go around in a circle, which takes a little bit of guesswork because obviously Excel is made for tables, not circles. So we're gonna say that this is gonna be equal to the four, and I'm gonna, we're gonna do this first with the numbers, four represents a C, and then I'm also gonna put the number, it's the first, as well as the, the uh, mode, Ionian. Now, I'd like to put both of these things, notice that a lot of times people represent the first with a one, which will be capital or lowercase, but this one for us is telling us the relative position to the major scale, which is useful when I go down to like the Dorian, because now I can see that the that the Ionian is telling me it's going to construct a major chord, but also that it's the first position on the relative major scale, which is useful. So what I'd like to do is get the one and the Roman numeral one and the Ionian to show up here. How could I do that? I can't just say this equals this plus this because it's not a formula that's not going to work it's got to have a text kind of component to it so i'm going to say this equals let's say this equals and then i want to pick up uh this bit and then i'm going to tie it to a dot i want to put a period after it so i'm going to put a dollar sign or an and that means i'm going to tie it to another piece of text and then i'm going to put a quotes around it around the period and then a quote around the period and maybe I want a space a period and a space and then a quote closing that up so it's just gonna type that in and then I want to add to that this bit so then I'm gonna put another and and then I want to say and pick up this one and and so enter and so there we have it now we have our text there so I have that and then somewhere around like here BW uh, we're going to put the next one around. It's going to be a D, which is represented with a six. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, then the second one here is going to be that two. And then I'm going to say that two and, and then, and then I'm looking up here in my formula bar and we're going to be picking up the, uh, la, 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 and, a quote period space quote and then we're gonna say that we want and and then pick up the Dorian boom all right I'm actually gonna hide I can hide from 2 on over to 13 so I could see this more easily let's hide those two so I can work right next to it here okay so there's that one I could format these as we go I'm gonna make this like black and white home tab font group black, white, center it, and then the one above, maybe I'll just center it, alignment center, and then I'll put a bracket around it. And then I'll copy that formatting, format painter to this one. Well, hold on a sec. Home tab, format painter to this one. And then this one, uh, home tab, format painter to this one. Okay, and then maybe I should left align. This should be left align, left align, and then left align. Okay, and so then this one is gonna be equal to the next one, which is an eight. That's our next note, which is gonna be an E. 
and that then I'm gonna say the same thing here equals we're gonna say this three and then and tying it to quotes a period space end quote and then this Phrygian and boom and then so that's that one and then I'll format paint these format paint and put that here and so then we're gonna have let's say down here BV BV7 BV7 is gonna be equal to the 9 which is an F and this is gonna be equal to the 4 and quotes period space quotes and then and and the Lydian and enter and then format painting this do do and format painting this do do and then I'm gonna go there's the nine and then in like B U uh, uh, no not there nine ten eleven over here this equals the eleven and that's going to be equal to the five and quotes period well that's not a quote quote period space quote and then tie it and to the mixolydian boom and then i can just format paint both of these at the same time two birds with one stone home tab font group why are you killing birds with stones? I'm not, I was just afraid. I didn't really kill the bird. It's just a phrase. And then we're gonna say this is gonna be BS. This is gonna be going to the one. And then this is gonna be equal to then the six and then and, and then quotes and then period space quotes and then and, and we'll pick up this one. And then we could say that this is going to be format painted there and then home tab format paint here. Depends on the bird. Some birds I don't like because they eat my lunch at the beach. I don't like that. And this is going to be equal to, <laughs> equal to we're going to say this one and then we're going to say and and then quotes and then period space and then quotes and then and and then locrian boom and then we'll format paint these two i can do it two birds one time one stone again boom the birds they're dead with one stone <laughs> man that's grim that's a grim fray i'm going to select these items and then double click and this will make it as wide as it can uh, as small as it can while still fitting it. Now it's a little uneven. I'm going to have to do that again because the names are going to be different down below, which help, will have different lengths. But that's the general idea. Now I should be able to copy this whole thing and the relative amounts should show up down here. And so now relative cell references, there's a C. Now why is this useful again? Note that if I'm going to build a chord, the chords are built like this. If I start on the C, I go from the C to the D, uh, I mean, sorry, skipping the D to the E to the G. That's how we get our triad. If I wanna pick the seventh, I pick the next one, skipping the A, going to the B. If I keep going, then I go back to the two, but I don't call it a two, I call it a nine, right? And then I go from the two and I skip the three and I go to the four, but I don't call it a four, even though it's still gonna be the F or a note F9, it's right I, I call it uh, an 11 and then I go here to the 13 so all of the notes could be in one chord but we don't call it one we don't call the chord you know one through seven we we, we call it a nine uh, 11 and 13 right that's the idea all right let's copy that now I'm going to copy that same idea so I'm almost thinking it might not be worthwhile to do it with the numbers because it gets a little confusing to see the numbers. And so maybe I skip the one with the numbers and I put it down here so it doesn't get as cluttered just looking at the letters, not with the numbers above it. So let's do that. So I'm just going to paste it down and all of the relative amounts should be showing up. All right. And then maybe I'm actually, I'm actually just going to delete this bit up top. Let's just delete that 
and then format paint over it so that now it, so now I, I have my circle here that's not too close to any other circle that confuses things I don't like it's like when you're it's like when I'm trying to eat and I the peas are too close to the mashed potatoes and they get contaminated and then I can't eat it anymore and then we'll select these and we'll double click make it as so it had to be a little bit wider to fit these down here so there we have it so now we have we have all all of these from the perspective of the Dorian the Phrygian see if I'm looking at it from the perspective of the Phrygian the Phrygian is now the one I'm gonna make the E like the one I'll put it on top and if I start with it I just take every other note so now I'm starting with the E to the G to the B and then if I kept going to the D and then if I kept going to the two but now it's going to be the nine and then if I kept going it would be to the four but it would be the eleven and then to the five the six which would be the thirteen right that would be the idea and we have that for each of them so sometimes that's useful to see so then we have uh, the circle of thirds uh, that we can look at so so I might just say hey look I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see those things just in in one like already basically taking every other note that's what the circle of thirds is going to be doing so in other words i can go over here to to let's pick like this one and say i'm gonna if i start on the c then i can say okay let's go to around here then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to skip that i'm going to go from the c to the to the e so i'm just going to say i'm just going to skip it go to the e and then down below it, I'm going to skip the F and I'm going to go to the G and there's our triad. So you can see there is the triad. So instead of me having to make the circle and make the triad, I could see all the ones that are just next to each other are the triad. And then, and then if I started on the E, if I started here, then I would skip the F and go to the G. And then if I do the next one, I'm going to go do, do, do. This is going to be, let's do it like right here I would go from from uh, the the G skipping the A and going to the B so this is the next bit of the triad the E the G and if I had an E I'd, I'd have E G B so you can see it's right next to each other already instead of me skipping everyone so then I'm gonna go from the B skipping the C to go to the D and then we have that there and then I'm gonna go on with cell BZ I'm trying to figure out what the best placement is so we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to then going from where was I the D and then skipping the E and going to the F and then above that we're gonna say this is going to be going from the F skipping the G and going to the B and so there we have it and then it goes back to uh, the C up top so maybe I can move this all up one so there we have it's kind of a circle it's kind of an ugly looking little flat flat uh, circle but there's gonna be our circle hold on I messed up here this B is wrong I go from the F skipping the G to the A that makes sense I thought no wait a second here I go from the F and I think that's right I think my master key is wrong here so in any case that's what we have let's I'm gonna select these now and I'm gonna double click on it hopefully and then so it makes them much smaller here and then we can possibly just make these black and white black white and then uh, black white and then black white so it looks more like a circle here pretty close to a circle this time for Excel that's not bad black white and then I'll select these two and make it black and white so there we have it okay so then I could then copy this down as long as it's relative to the circle here so it's going at this level aligning with the C so I'm gonna go do 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 so it's aligning right there boom and then do 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 so it's aligning right there right boom and then do, 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 it's aligning right there boom and then do, 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 it's aligning right there boom and then do, 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 aligning right there boom 
and then do, 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 boom. And then I can make a skinny column here. Let's put a skinny BY, same th width as this one. Selecting this home tab, format painter, and then there. Okay, so now if I unhide, let's say we unhide over here, going from AG over right click, unhide, but I'm still gonna hide the fretboard going from this skinny over to, and let's just look at the circle here over to here, right click and hide. So now if I look at this, when we create a chord, it would be C, E, G, right? So if I started on the C, it would be C, E, G. And then if I kept going, it would be C, every other note, E, uh, G, and then B, and then, it, and then it goes to the D, to the F, and to the A. And we're not skipping every other note here because I just put these, these are the, the even ones, right? And then if I started on the D, if I started on the D is over here, that's why it's a little bit wonky because the D isn't the two, the D is gonna be over here. But if I find the D, then I can easily just see, okay, it's just gonna be the D skipping to the F, to the A, D, F, A. And then if I kept going, it would be to the C and then to the E, to the G, to the B. And if I started on an E, there's the E. So it would be an E skipping to the G, skipping to the B. So you can see they're right next to each other. And then I can go to the D and then the F and then the A and the C. If I started on an F, we'd be on the F here. And then we'd go to the skip to the A, skip to the C, skip to the E, and then G da da da. And if I went to the G, we'd be here. And then I'd skip to the I'd skip to the B here and then to the D and so on. Now, when I have my worksheet over here, oftentimes we might just hide the two, hide the two, hide the four, and then hide the six. So now when I look at my, now this is mapped out the way we would construct our chord, right? We'd have the one, three, five, that's the baseline of the chord. Typically the next thing we would add is the seven. And, and then if we wanted to add more to it, then we go to the 9, 11, and 13. 9, 11, 13 really being the even numbers, in essence, uh, equivalent to the 2, the 4, and the 6. But it's mapped out this way because this is that's how we basically read it when we're constructing. And you can see that repeating over here. So that's the idea. So let's go ahead and unhide all of this stuff. Unhide, by the way, that circle of thirds, I think is not exactly right. I think I have an error over here on the example. So I will fix that for my final worksheet, hopefully, so that uh, you can see, so that we can see this worksheet and this is basically it. So this is what we will then use, hopefully going forward and, uh, and, and in our practice videos, possibly if we, if we might use this worksheet and then basically map out our fretboard over here and uh, move from there and it'll be great. So that's, that's the worksheet.